Death rates due to the COVID-19 are increasing. India has reached more than 80,000 cases a day. Fever, the body pain, the cough. Some of them have a loss of taste, a loss of smell. I lost two patients to the dreaded cytokine storm. CRP or the C-reactive protein, LDH, IL-6, D-dimer, ferritin. Hi guys, welcome back. Death rates due to the COVID-19 are increasing and also the number of cases are increasing every day. India has reached more than 80,000 cases a day and it is high time we understand what we can do to help ourselves from not getting into a state where we are affected by this COVID-19. So if you are someone who is positive with the COVID-19 or you're someone who's at risk or somebody in your family or any of your friends are positive with the COVID-19 and you would like to know if there are any evidence-based steps which you can take in order to identify if you are at high risk then this is the video for you. Now in order to understand if you are somebody at high risk you need to understand how the COVID-19 starts affecting you in the first place. So if you are in an area where there is the COVID-19 and you are susceptible, you're not wearing a mask and you inhale the virus. The virus first stays in your upper respiratory tract that is the nose, your mouth and your upper throat for the first 48 hours and it tries to find a cell on which it can sit and migrate or move into your lower respiratory tract. Once it moves into your lower respiratory tract, it tries to find its way into the alveoli. Now, in the alveoli is where the pathology of the COVID-19 starts to affect us. The alveoli is the smallest unit of the lung, like the nephron is the smallest unit of the kidney and it is also the functioning unit. So what is the function of the lung? The function of the lung is exchange of gases. So the atmosphere has oxygen, carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Our respiratory system takes it in and it puts the oxygen from the atmosphere into our blood and takes the carbon dioxide from our blood and breathes it out. So this is what happens in a single act of respiration and this exchange of oxygen from our lungs into the blood and the carbon dioxide from the blood into our lungs happens in the alveoli. Now remember for gaseous exchange to happen the alveoli or the interface of exchange should be dry. But in COVID-19, what happens is in some people, the alveoli starts to get filled with fluid. And of course, you all understand that exchange of gases is not easy when it has to pass through a fluid. And this is why breathing difficulty occurs because transferring oxygen, just the normal atmospheric pressure of oxygen will not be enough to transfer oxygen through the alveoli filled with fluid. And that is where shortage of oxygenation in COVID-19 occurs. And this is called ARDS. I'm Dr. Santosh Jacob, orthopedic surgeon and COVID-19 physician from the city of Chennai, Tamil Nadu, India. I believe that information about a disease is the best way we can keep ourselves safe from any disease. And I am here to help you guys do just that. So now going back to ARDS, now clinically, if you're a first responder or you are someone who has COVID, how do you identify if you're going into this dreaded ARDS? First is breathlessness. The patient will experience breathlessness. It can be identified by an increased respiratory rate. That is the number of times you are breathing per minute. Now there is a way you have to check for the respiratory rate. Yes, I held the pulse because when you're checking someone's respiratory rate, you cannot act like you're checking the respiratory rate as that will increase their panic and their respiratory rate will increase unnaturally. So what you do is you just act like you're checking their pulse, but you keep your eyes on their chest movements and you count how many in and out movements in 30 seconds and you multiply it into two to get a respiratory rate for the minute. So a normal respiratory rate is somewhere between 15 to 20. So anything above 20 is a high respiratory rate and anything above 30 means the patient is severely dyspneic or definitely struggling to breathe. This is a sign of 
acute respiratory distress syndrome and here the patient definitely needs oxygen or sometimes even non-invasive ventilation. Now why does this respiratory rate increase? So generally when you're struggling to breathe what happens is your oxygen saturation or the amount of oxygen reaching the peripheries of your limbs decreases and that sends a sign to the brain and the brain reacts or compensates by making your respiratory muscles work more and increase the number of times you breathe but after that once your muscles get tired you're not able to breathe fast and your oxygen saturation will reduce and at this point of time you definitely need oxygen support and that is why you need to go to the hospital if you're starting to get breathless or even have an oxygen cylinder at home till you get to the hospital because every minute you're breathless it means that your lungs are struggling to breathe and that means that it could lead to a further increase in fluid accumulation in your alveoli. Now, I am seeing that 90% of my patients are asymptomatic or have the mild form of disease. That is, they have the fever, the body pain, the cough. Some of them have a loss of taste, a loss of smell, but it returns within 14 days. But 10% of all those who are getting positive are susceptible and are coming to the ICU with the dreaded cytokine storm. I was in fact inspired to make this video because I lost two patients to the dreaded cytokine storm this week. And I feel that it was because they presented slightly late to the hospital. And so in this video, I'm going to tell you a few simple steps which you can take with the assistance of your doctor to identify if you are somebody who's at higher risk of the cytokine storm. And if you are, you can take steps by going to the hospital early and hence saving your life or a loved one's life. What is this cytokine storm I keep talking about? It is a state in COVID-19 where your immune system mounts an unnatural exaggerated response to the viral particles and it results in destruction of the entire respiratory cells or the entire respiratory system. This is actually a malfunction of our immune system and the immune system sees to destroy the entire area infected or the entire area where the viral particles are rather than doing a proper immune system's job which is to recognize, to tolerate and to destroy if necessary. When this recognition, toleration and destruction if necessary is not happening with your immune system, you go in to something known as a cytokine storm and all steps now are being focused on preventing the cytokine storm because in some patients we are just not able to do anything. So here, first step is if you're COVID positive, follow your symptoms. The COVID virus incubates for five days and you should have your symptoms. If you're somebody who's not going to be asymptomatic, you should have your symptoms within the first five days and again keep following till 14 days because in some people 25% of the people symptoms are starting at day 7 so if your symptoms are starting immediately check your pulse oximetry or your oxygen saturation and make sure that it doesn't drop below 95 if it drops below 95 whether you have breathlessness or not because there is a condition called happy hypoxia in COVID-19 where sometimes even if your oxygen saturation falls to 90, you are comfortable because your brain doesn't recognize that your oxygen is falling. So keep the pulse oximeter as your gold standard. And if your pulse oximeter is showing less than 95, I suggest you call your doctor and ask him for a high resolution CT scan image because in the high resolution CT scan image, you can see something known as a ground glass appearance in your lungs, which signifies accumulation of the fluid I was talking about in the alveoli. And the ideal time to do a CT is five to seven days after you tested positive. Then if your CT is showing signs of ground glass, there is a panel of tests known as the cytokine storm panel, which is CRP or the C-reactive protein, LDH, IL-6, D-dimer and ferritin. Now these five tests, specifically I would like to mention or you to remember the IL-6 and the D-dimer 
because these two are pretty sensitive to identify if you are going to have a severe form of the disease. I am also going to give you guys a small tip with which you can remember if you or somebody you know is at high risk for the COVID-19 because if somebody is, has comorbidities, they are at high risk for this cytokine storm. You can remember it with the mnemonic called HOLD. H stands for hypertension and hypo or hyper thyroidism. O stands for obesity and old age. L stands for any pre-existing issue of the lungs. It can be somebody who's a smoker who has COPD which is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or somebody who's had lung cancer or somebody who has asthma. Any pre-existing lung disease is L and D is diabetes and diet somebody who has an unhealthy diet apart from this there are a lot of other factors also like somebody who has cancer somebody who has a general overall lower level of immunity all of them are susceptible but i think it is easy if you remember it as hold so hold corona remember this and remember the comorbidities so if you liked what you saw till now, please do consider subscribing and also press the notification button so that you get such regular updates. So now summarizing all what we heard till now. So if you're asymptomatic, isolate for 14 days, take your vitamins and after 14 days, make sure that you do not exert yourself and go about your activities in a slow and steady manner. If you're somebody who has a mild disease, I suggest that you keep checking your oxygen saturation and as long as it is above 95, I think you're all right. Just isolate for your 14 days. Do the normal symptomatic and supportive care which is expected of you and you should be fine. If you're somebody who has a moderate disease, then check your oxygen saturation and if it falls below 95, please ask your physician for a high resolution CT scan if he or she recommends it especially if you're breathless and you can also do the COVID panel, especially to check for the D dimer and the IL-6, which is the interleukin-6, which will show you if you are at risk for the cytokine storm. And this will help you to predict if you need hospitalization or not also. So guys, thank you for listening. I hope this was useful. And if you're somebody who just had the COVID-19, just jot down your experience of how you felt during the COVID-19 in the comments below and let's have a chat about it. All right, see you guys. Bye-bye. Dr. Santosh Jacob signing off.